I have not checked my credit score in over a year. Where are we sitting? I have no idea. Let's find out. Welcome back to the channel guys. My name is Josh and lately we've been doing some videos on real estate and getting your first home and buying that house for the first time. There's a lot of things that go into that like having enough income and having the right credit score and it's super interesting. I was actually on a call with someone yesterday and we checked their credit score to see if they could get a house and they were like 830. It was insane how high it was. And I just want to talk a little bit more about credit scores. And honestly, I'm pretty resentful of my client who is extremely high on his credit score. Whereas we don't really know where mine is. I've had some struggles in the past, but I want to dive in live with you guys. I haven't checked it. I'm going to pull it up on camera while we go through this and we're going to see what my credit score is. And we're going to dive into that. And credit scores, they're different between countries, but they typically range from, I think on the low end, like 400 to 800, somewhere in that range. All I really know is you for sure want to be over 600 and you really want to be over 700. And if you're in the eights, that's fantastic. So we're going to take a look at my report, see what my score is, see what's lacking, what maybe, maybe it turns out that it's actually really good. But there's a bunch of different things that go into a credit score, right? There's things like your payment history. Have you made your payments on time? <laughs> Which reminds me, uh, there's going to be a ding on this thing. And you guys might be thinking, wow, Josh, he's this financial guy. He's a wealth manager. His credit score is probably pristine. But I've learned my lessons the hard way. And this video actually might be one of those ones that's just more relatable because it shows that I am not whatsoever perfect. I remember when it comes to payment history, there was a time in my life when I was a naive, you know, 20, 21 year old. And I thought, I'm going to get myself a BMW. And not only am I going to buy myself a BMW to show all my friends that I'm really cool, I'm also going to buy a motorcycle. That's cool, right? Who, who doesn't love motorcycles and think those are sweet? So what I did is I bought those and they require that you insure them. And where I am, insurance is super expensive on motorcycles. It costs me like $2,500 for a summer. And that here is like four or five months. So it's way overpriced. It's absolutely ridiculous. But anyways, I'm paying insurance on a car and a motorcycle. And eventually I decide, okay, this motorcycle thing, it's pretty expensive. I'm going to sell it maybe a year later. So I sell that motorcycle and I see my insurance rate plummet because I don't have to pay for that anymore. And I think, great, that's fantastic. And <sighs> motorcycle, BMW, I had a, quite a few speeding tickets and you know, even uh, parking tickets that had kind of racked up over time. And I'm the kind of guy who lets things pile up a little too much. And over time, I remember one day I was in a coffee meeting with a client and I come out in the street and my car's gone and I'm like, Ah, uh, shoot, I got towed. I was probably in the wrong zone or whatever it is, but it didn't look like there was anything telling me I couldn't park there. So I go to where I got towed to, I walk into the office and I'm like, hey, I'm here to pick up a black uh, BMW 3 Series. I'm like, we don't wanna hear it, sir, get in the office. And I'm like, uh, what, excuse me? Like, I'm just picking up my car. And they're like, nope, you're in there. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I look above and it's like collections, which is what happens when you have a debt that goes to collections. The collectors are like, you haven't paid in forever, you owe us. And I'm like, hey, I'm not trying to fight anybody. I'm just trying to find out what's going on here. And it turns out that when that motorcycle insurance expired, apparently I wasn't renewing my car insurance. I didn't go in to renew it because I saw that the fee in my budget had gone down. And for some reason or another, long story short, I didn't pay car insurance for like a year. And I had all these tickets and things that racked up. And all to put it together, all of the mail notifying me that I was late and uninsured was going to my rental property, which my tenants were taking the mail and throwing it out. So there's a large mishmash of issues here, but all that being said, massive ding on the credit score that time because I did not make my payments on time. I legitimately went to collections and I had stuff outstanding for a year. So that's the reason why my credit score might be lower than optimal, but who knows? It's been a lot of time since then and there are other things that go into a credit score, things like utilization. And what that means is how much credit have you been given? What's the maximum you've been allowed? Like what's the limits on your credit card and on your line of credit and things like that? versus how much you actually have outstanding. That's your utilization. And for me, you know, I've got a business line of credit. I've got a personal line of credit. I've got a business credit card, a personal credit card, another personal credit card. There's a lot of uh, car loans, leases. I have a lot of different mixes of credit and I only at any given time have about 45,000 of credit that I could use across all those different things. And in any given month, I pay it all down to zero or maybe a couple thousand. 
And the idea here is that my credit, I only use 5,000 to 45,000 available. So my utilization is actually quite low. So we might actually find that that works out really well. And in addition to that, we actually also have something called credit duration, which talks about, well, how long have you had credit for, right? This is a big part of your credit score. If you're 18 years old, it doesn't matter if you have all the most pristine history and everything, you haven't been around the block enough and the banks don't really, and lenders don't really give you that much time a day because they wanna know you have duration. And for me, I actually went out and got my first credit card when I was 18 and I had been spending on there and working on my credit score for like the last seven years. So that should definitely help the fact that I have some duration now. So thanks to a bank that I don't really wanna say because there's no need for me to really promote them because I don't really care that much about what bank you're with and I certainly am not getting paid by them. But through my bank, I can actually see my credit score and it's a soft pull. And what that means is, it doesn't affect my credit score to pull this up, which is great. And that's something you should know. If you're going to shop for cars or houses or all these different things, every time you pull the credit, it actually dings you a little bit. So we're doing a soft credit pull and I'm gonna show you guys exactly what my credit score is. And I'm kind of nervous. I'm exposing myself to the world. Oh my, look at this, go, keep going, keep going. Hey, that's not the worst. We've made some improvements, I'm pretty happy. My TransUnion credit score is 750, look at that. You know what, I'm kind of relieved, like my heart's beating a little bit because I was like, man, if it shows up as 500, you guys are all gonna unsubscribe and I'm toast. But no, I'm not. So let's take a look through this so you guys can kind of see what's going on here. Up on the left-hand side, we have just the general score. We've talked all about that, where you fall. And honestly, like many areas in life, I am very, very average. And it looks like I've fallen kind of right in the average. It's not a, it's not a disaster, but I'm kind of more towards the average. And over time, as you can see in this chart down here, my score history, you can see we had that little accident that I mentioned. And over time, we've been building it back up, building it back up, building it back up. And this is actually a really cool program because I can see all sorts of stuff here. It shows me um, a score simulator. Like if I add a credit card or if I add a loan or if I reduce the balances, it'll show me what my simulated score might be if I do those things or if I improve. And this is, this is really fascinating, but what I'll do is I'll actually bring up a full out credit report and this might disclose some details. We might have to blur some stuff out. Um, but anyways, here you go. This is my credit report. It shows the period, it shows my score, it shows the balances. So right now it says there's about 135,000 outstanding. That's because my mortgage is in there. And my mortgage on my rental property is about 125, somewhere around there. And then I'll have other things in there as well. Shows my monthly payments, how many credit accounts I have open, all this sort of stuff. So this is really cool. I can get my fair share of credit. If I need to go buy a house or if I need to do something, my score is high enough to do that, which is great because the last time I checked this, it wasn't so hot. So I'm glad that's improving. Life's better now, business is a little more stable. Over time, if you guys keep subscribing to this YouTube channel, I might even be able to pay my bills. And all of that coming together, I can actually pay my payments on time and it looks like my credit score will continue to improve. So anyways guys, I hope you got some fun today over realizing how much higher your credit score is than mine. And if you're lower, then you know you might have to head over to my video on home buying, which will teach you all about how to increase your credit score if you'd like to do that. But anyways, if you guys got any value, even if it's just about making fun of me out of this video whatsoever, please make sure to hit that like button, hit subscribe and turn on post notifications for more videos just like this one every single week. Until next time.